Coined way back in 1871, phantom limb syndrome is a very common and often painful condition that even affects amputees today, in which they feel that a missing limb is somehow still attached to the body. That's weird. Like, really weird. So the big question is, how do these ghostly sensations even occur? First, we will need to know how sensation normally works. Every inch of our skin contains specialised sensitive cells called touch receptors, which send information to the brain about the shape, texture, temperature, or vibrations of the things we touch. This information is relayed as electrical pulses, which race along the receptor's axon, a component that functions much like a biological wire. When I touch this braille sign, the touch receptors in my hand fire a huge number of electrical pulses, giving us information about how the stimulus feels. Acting like a highway of the nervous system, the spinal cord then rapidly sends the signals originating in the peripheral nervous system to their final destination in the central nervous system, the brain. The brain is enveloped by an outer layer of brain cells called the cerebral cortex. This region here is called the primary somatosensory cortex. It's this part of the brain that processes and interprets all the information from the receptors to give us a conscious feeling of touch, temperature and pain. Ah. Now one particular theory that tries to explain phantom limbs suggested by the neuroscientist Ramachandran actually says that maybe these limbs are not caused by ghosts, but instead by a major reorganisation of the connections in the somatosensory cortex after amputation. Today we visit the Queensland Brain Institute to learn more about the theory. The primary somatosensory cortex is organised like a map of the skin of the whole body. If you touch a point on the skin surface, a corresponding part of the cortex always receives and processes that information. This means that there is a specific cortical region representing each body part, a concept called somatotopy. When we touch an area on our hand, the touch receptors in our skin send action potentials all the way up the spinal cord to activate the neurons in this particular area of the primary somatosensory cortex. Likewise, if we feel an annoying itch on our nose, then the cells in the corresponding cortical area become activated. The same somatotopic representation applies to the arms, the legs, and all other body parts. Now, specifically for upper limb amputees, the neurons in the arm and hand regions of the sensory cortex are no longer used or excited. So now, you're probably also scratching your head and wondering, what on earth happens to these disconnected neurons? I mean, do the neurons just sit there and, and laze around and do nothing? Or do neurons remain active and change their functions and connections? Well, luckily for us, back in the 1980s, scientists in San Francisco conducted experiments to answer this exact question. <gasps> First, they got a monkey. Let's call him Bob. Next, they used microelectrodes to pinpoint exactly which parts of the sensory cortex were activated after stimulating different areas of Bob's, frankly, hairy hands. The scientists then severed one of Bob the monkey's fingers, and after several months, the scientists repeated the initial mapping procedure using the microelectrodes. Hmm. Hmm. Aha! What the scientists had discovered was that the connections in the sensory cortex had undergone significant change as a result of the amputation. And so it turns out that the decrease in sensory input from the amputated finger actually changed the physical wiring of the brain itself. We know that the brain's connections, especially in the cerebral cortex, can change in response to sensory input, or in this case a lack of inputs from the outside world.
this idea of flexibility in the cortex, or more formally, synaptic plasticity, is the last piece of the puzzle in our mystery of phantom limbs. For upper limb amputees, the cells in the face area get a bit greedy and hijack the unused limb cells in the cortex. This invasion occurs by making new connections. Whenever upper limb amputees touch a part of their face, which is quite a lot during any given day, not only are the cells in the face area stimulated, but the connected limb cells of the cortex are also stimulated, therefore tricking the brain into feeling phantom sensations in the amputated limb. Of course, we can't leave lower limb amputees out of the equation. So, for Ramachandran's theory in general, we have these cortical neurons which were once devoted to the intact limb. Now these deprived cells seek sensory input and form neuronal connections with somatotopically adjacent neurons. Now, whenever the amputee activates the touch receptors in a region of skin that is somatotopically adjacent to these so-called abandoned neurons, they get excited indirectly via the new connections making the brain interpret these electrical signals as if they were real sensations in the amputated limb. So today we've looked at some fundamental neuroscience concepts and Ramachandran's theory to ultimately get to the bottom of our mystery of phantom limbs. And now we know that phantom limbs are essentially caused by a combination, an unexpected combination, of somatotopic organisation on one hand and synaptic plasticity on the other. Now how's that? for a breakthrough. But the theory can't explain everything. Until a better theory comes along, it might just be that ghosts of limbs are haunting us after all.